All right, we are here live, military images. I'm Ron Coddington, the editor and publisher, and uh, we are going to be getting started in just a minute or two. We'll let, uh, uh, let folks come on, and uh, as you come on, give us a hello. I'm glad that you're able to join with us tonight as we celebrate the season finale. This is uh, our 16th episode of 2018. Uh, in some way, it's sort of hard to believe that uh, we've done that many programs during this time. And um, I owe a big thank you to all of you who have tuned in uh, to watch and to offer your support. And of course, to leave your comments and uh, to contribute all the images. So the photo collecting community and all of you who are interested in the Civil War and the American history, I'm glad to have you here tonight and throughout this season. Uh, it's been a great year, actually, for collecting. I've heard uh, several folks say that this is a uh, this is a new golden age for collecting. There's been so much amazing material that's come out uh, over the last few years, and certainly 2018 was was no exception. And uh, so uh, to mark this year. I thought we'd try a little something different with, uh, uh, with this final episode of the season. And uh, that is to take a look at uh, what I think are some of the most intriguing images that have been published in the magazine over the last four issues. Now, let me tell you, this is not an easy thing to do. Uh, at first, I thought it would be a breeze. And then I began to take a look at all of the issues that we've published. Altogether, over the four issues, we've published 464 Civil War era photographs. Uh, I have to tell you, I've never tried counting them, so I've never really even given it a thought, but I was quite shocked uh, with that number. It seems awfully high, but there it is. We're uh, publishing about 115, slightly more than that, on average, images per issue. And um, as those of you who know who have contributed, uh, we, we really search hard and we search long to find what we think are some of the best quality images and some of the most interesting images, not only for the aesthetics, but also for the stories behind them, for the uniforms that they wear, and for the little nuggets of information that are contained within each one. It's our chance to bring history alive, bring Civil War history alive through the pages of the magazine. And thanks again to all of you for doing that. So um, we're going to get started here in just a minute. And uh, the exercise is pretty simple. Here are the rules. Uh, after going through all 464 images, I found 26 uh, altogether. So um, uh, what we're going to do here is um, we're going to publish those images uh, as they come available. I'm looking at our executive producer right now. Um, we are going to either publish all the images at the end of uh, the program. So what we'd like you to do is when those images come available, when you see them in the comments field, what I want you to do is vote for your favorites. And um, we'll tally them all up by uh, New Year's Day, and then we're gonna release, release the results. So the thinking here is you'll have a chance to vote, vote live, and then for the many people who watch the show after, uh, over the next 24 to 48 hours, they'll have their chance to vote, and then we'll tally all of those votes, and we'll let you know who the quote-unquote winners are for the most intriguing images of 2018. So without further ado, here we go. Oh, I should also mention, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the images are appearing in order of when they were published. So we'll start with the spring 2018 issue and we'll work all the way up to the current issue. So here we go. Okay, here's the first one. Uh, this is a Confederate soldier with uh, a canteen. It's an amazingly crisp photograph. Uh, he's, his canteen is right up close and center. Uh, he's wearing a crescent and star pin, which suggests New Orleans origins. And uh, this is from the collection of Charles Darden. 
Number two. Here we go. Number two, also from Charles Darden's collection. Uh, this is a cavalryman uh, with a pair of Savage Navy North model percussion revolvers. Uh, you can see them tucked into his belt. Uh, he has an infantry uh, officer's, uh, an infantry foot sword along with him. Uh, but man, uh, if you're a collector of weapons and revolvers, uh, as far as Savage Norse are going, uh, there's probably no better image that I've seen. Image number three. This is Private Stephen Thompson of the 5th Michigan Cavalry. Uh, a pose of him holding what we believe is a loaf of fresh bread. Uh, there was a move afoot in the Army of the Potomac in 1863 to provide the soldiers with fresh bread or a quote-unquote pound loaf. And uh, this is it. He's got his knife sticking in it. This is from the Art O'Leary collection. Moving on to number four. Here you go. Uh, this one, we titled it in the magazine initially as Four Fighting Orange Blossoms. This is from the Paul Rusinoff collection. And uh, these soldiers, all officers in the 124th New York Infantry, they are perhaps best known for their fighting uh, at the Battle of Gettysburg along Houck's Ridge on the second day of the battle, buying time for the Union Army as they became prepared to meet the Confederates at Little Round Top. These four officers are from left to right. Uh, Lieutenant Henry Powell Ramsdale and fellow lieutenants William Brownson, Henry Travis, and James Finnegan. Uh, the last named gentleman was wounded during the battle. Number five. We've got a Confederate here armed with a model 1816-1822 conversion musket. This is from the Brian Watson collection. And uh, the details of the uniform suggest that he is a Confederate from Georgia. Moving on. Number six, another image from Brian Watson's collection uh, is this uh, soldier. Um, uh, the image was found in Tennessee and um, he wears a, quite an interesting, almost like a wheel cap that has uh, suggestions of a Mexican war origins. And he's also carrying a Colt model 1849 revolver. Now keep in mind, the voting is gonna begin. We'll get all these image posted, images posted at the end of the show, and then you can vote. All right, number seven. This is from the Doug York collection. Uh, those of you uh, may know, uh, if you're uh, all of you that are subscribers, saw this image just grace the cover of our summer issue. Uh, I believe this image came out of an estate in Massachusetts, and um, there's every possibility that he might have served in the 54th Massachusetts, possibly the 55th Massachusetts. All right, image number eight. Uh, this trooper uh, probably or likely served in one of the six U.S. Colored Cavalry regiments. He may have also served in the 5th Massachusetts Cavalry. Uh, this image uh, shows a corporal standing full pose with his saber and his uh, uh, and his saber holder. Um, this is from the Dan Schwab collection. Number nine. This uh, trio of Union cavalry officers standing, or pardon me, sitting at a table with uh, coffee service. Behind them are standing three uh, servants, um, likely freedmen um, or escaped slaves. Not sure where this image was taken but certainly there's a lot of commentary behind the relationship of the officers to the servants. Image number 10 from the Mike McAfee collection. Uh, this one is just uh, pure fun. You see images like this occasionally where you've got the uh, hat of the soldier being worn by uh, a lady friend, could be a mother, could be a sister. In this case, uh, you can see the three women who are standing, three young women standing behind him. Uh, the soldier, a first sergeant, is without his hat, uh, but the young lady standing directly behind him in the center, she has it on. Image number 11. 
Uh, this is from the Brian Boovey collection, and uh, this is Sergeant John C. Lowe of the 13th Mississippi Infantry. Uh, he was wounded and captured at Antietam. He survived his imprisonment and his wound and uh, lived a long life after the war. Image 12. This one has uh, an engraving uh, across the bottom into the plate itself. You can just barely see it down here. It says played out soldier, sort of a whimsical view of a soldier uh, reclining with all his uh, uh, equipment uh, displayed around him. Um, this comes from the Kevin Canberg collection. He's a corporal, uh, this guy, um, probably from New York. Uh, another image from Kevin Canberg's collection, number 13. We have this uh, soldier who is probably imitating a pose that was seen throughout the war countless times. He's sitting on a log with a canteen, maybe filled with water, who knows what, but uh, there he is. That's image number 13. Image 14 is this Confederate soldier, and um, he is wearing a gingham battle shirt which uh, is unusual. Uh, you certainly have seen your share of Confederate battle shirts, but this is quite an interesting design. And you can see a big knife that is uh, um, stuck into his belt. So again, another one from the Kevin Camberg collection. Number 15, also from Kevin's collection, is uh, one of the most, uh, gosh, one of the best drummer images you're likely to find. It's color tinted. You've got the drum uh, up in the front. Uh, you've got the young man who can't be more than like 13 or 14 years old uh, carrying a saber, um, which is almost touching the drum. A pair of drumsticks in the back. Really quite a wonderful photograph. Image 16. Another, uh, speaking of color tinting, this one is also nicely tinted. You've got uh, a German immigrant. His name is John Egler. He served in the 26th Michigan Infantry. He suffered a mortal wound uh, at the Battle of Spotsylvania. Uh, of course, um, his loss was uh, painful to all of his friends and all of his family back in Michigan. What really caught my interest, not only the quality of this image and the fact that his knapsack is there, um, but notice in one of his hands, he is holding an apple. Uh, in the other hand, he is carrying or holding his bayonet. Uh, it's really an interesting composition because uh, back home in Michigan, he had a farm that included an apple orchard. So the piece represented by the apple and the bayonet represented of war becomes something of, uh, of, a, of a representation of, uh, of war and peace. Moving on, image 17. The first of a few images of Lookout Mountain. Uh, this one is from the uh, 15th Pennsylvania Cavalry. The image itself was uh, displayed at a reunion of the regiment. And uh, there's a little joke that went around the room about a mule um, on top of Lookout Mountain kicking an artillery shell down the mountain that exploded and injured a bunch of Confederate soldiers. And uh, then the Union veteran held up this image and everybody had a great laugh at the regimental reunion. Uh, that story is documented in the regimental history. And um, here it is for you to vote on uh, soon. And uh, this also is in the Kevin Camberg image, uh, pardon me, the Kevin Camberg collection. And number 18, when was the last time you saw a Civil War daguerreotype? Mm, there's not a lot of them out there, uh, but we wrote about uh, Civil War daguerreotypes and published a few images of them in our autumn issue, including this Confederate soldier, a uh, pretty amazing photograph uh, from the Mike Medhurst collection. Uh, this soldier is standing holding a big, a big old D-guard Bowie knife and um, an interesting piece of headgear, which almost looks like a havelock. It could be an improvised havelock, but uh, quite an unusual photograph. For those of you who remember our Great American Cigar Gallery, um, you'll recall this one. Uh, this is from the Patrick Schroeder collection. And um, you've got a zouave here from the 146th New York uh, Infantry. And uh, he is posed showing off 
his complete uniform. He's got his leggings. Uh, he's got the whole thing. And he's got a cigar uh, at a jaunty angle in his mouth. So uh, again, from the Patrick Schroeder collection for you to possibly vote on. Image number 20 is the cover of our current issue. This is from the Buck Zydell collection. And um, you've got uh, two pards who are posing in front of the stars and stripes, beautifully tinted. Uh, what makes this, I think, especially unique is the fact that they don't have their uniform coats on. You can see their undershirts, their suspenders. Uh, they look relaxed, probably in camp. Uh, just a wonderful image of uh, two comrades serving uh, America. Image 21. Also from Buck Zydell's collection is uh, guys with axes and fists uh, aplenty. They're looking for a little bit of action. I'm not quite sure if they're pioneers, uh, lumberjacks, what their background is, but they're certainly looking for a fight. And um, this image is uh, quite fun, um, showing these three gentlemen. They may be brothers, who knows, um, but a uh, wonderful image up for your consideration. Another one of our Lookout Mountain uh, images, you may recall that we, uh, are, we've published two, two pieces, uh, two stories in our um, autumn and our winter issue about uh, Lookout Mountain. We've got one more to go. And uh, this one is, uh, I, I think, just a fun image to see. You've got a guy with a sort of a graying beard. He's pointing outwards with a stick. Got a gentleman with his binoculars and um, another guy with ax um, sitting there. So you can imagine these men coming up in groups, ones, twos, threes, whole companies coming up to Lookout Mountain to get their image taken at this famous point. So who knows what the guy with the stick is pointing at. Um, might be the other side, might be Missionary, Missionary Ridge. Uh, but anyway, it's a great, great image. Uh, and um, this one comes from the Guy DeMassey collection. A couple more to go. We've got this uh, image here from the George Whitley collection. Uh, this is another uh, photograph from the 15th Pennsylvania Cavalry. And um, this is the only image I've seen on Lookout Mountain where the officer is actually pointing at the camera. Unlike the last image where the guy had a stick pointing into the distance, this gentleman is pointing right at the camera. And even better, we know who he is. Uh, this is uh, Wilman Blackmar, first sergeant, as I mentioned, from the 15th Pennsylvania Cavalry. A few more to go. There we go. Uh, this powerful image is, uh, you can see there is a placard along the top of the tent. And um, it says, Andersonville as it is. This is a carte de visite. And um, it's a raggedy looking soldier. Um, his pants are pretty much, uh, one, one leg of his pants is missing. The other one is torn. He's barefoot, he's without socks. He has an improvised uh, camp stove set up on some little pieces of wood, um, a, some sort of a bandage on his hand. His jacket um, is missing a sleeve. And since publishing this image, we have uh, found out that uh, there's some belief that the jacket he's wearing is actually a Confederate jacket, uh, perhaps of Georgia manufacture. So adding more depth as we try to learn more about this photograph. Andersonville, as it is. This is from the John Cool collection. You may have seen John's uh, collection of New Jersey images in the most recent issue of the magazine. And uh, this has a New Jersey backmark, believed to be a prisoner of war who survived Andersonville. Image 25 is another carte de visite. And uh, this is from the Rick Brown uh, collection when it was published. And what we have here is uh, a union officer holding the New Jersey state colors, and um, of course the national colors, the stars and stripes, next to it. Uh, if you look closely, and you won't see it here, but when I post them online shortly, you'll be able to see uh, the center ribbon uh, right in here. If you look very, very closely, uh, you can see that the regimental designation is written in big letters on the back. It's 8th New Jersey Infantry. Um, a battle-hardened regiment, for sure. So image 25, uh, again, from the collection of Rick Brown. And I've got one more. 
Number 26. Don't ask me why uh, I landed on 26. The truth is I was going for, at first I was going for 20. Um, and I thought, you know what? I just can't get it down any further than 26. So 26 it is for this year. Uh, this is from the Chris Magiwick collection and um, an, an absolutely amazing photograph of four Confederate soldiers. Uh, they were all in the same company, the New Albany Grays, uh, which became Company K of the 21st Mississippi Infantry. They are identified from left to, uh, the first gentleman in fact is unidentified, but the next three uh, are identified. You have Captain Nicholas Blackwell, uh, James Blackwell, and the last guy, possibly John Pruitt. Again, from the Chris Magua collection. So there you have it. These are the 26, uh, what I think are the most intriguing images that were published in Military Ma Images Magazine in 2018. So here's a drill. We're gonna get these posted for you uh, very shortly. And uh, I'd love for you to vote. And uh, I guess you can vote at least once for each image if you want to. But at the end of uh, tomorrow night, maybe New Year's morning, we're gonna tally all of these uh, votes up and uh, we'll give you the results. So stay tuned for all of that. And again, I really wanna thank all of you for participating, for watching this year, uh, for your support of military images, and really most importantly, for your support of American history and for your support of the photo collecting community. So a big thank you to all of you for doing what you're doing to keep history alive. Keep telling the stories, keep sharing the images, and we'll see you in 2019. Take care, happy new year.